Um, he does have family in the area, including um, his uh, grandmother, as well as siblings, cousins. Um, he uh, was previously living off of uh, Connolly Drive, which is the uh, incident location, but um, Mr. Gray has an alternate address he can stay at, um, also in Atlanta, um, off of Burroughs Avenue. Um, Your Honor, at this time, um, Mr. Gray is in a no bond status, but uh, I believe today is his 90th day, and so he is entitled to a bond. Um, Your Honor, we would ask that a bond be instated in this case, uh, not to exceed $10,000 in total. Mr. Sergeant, he was out on bond in that other uh, misdemeanor battery case with the same victim. He was out on a signature bond through state court and that the same victim here was the victim there. You want to respond to that in any way? Um, Your Honor, I um, am not aware if the state court violation is um, is uh, still, uh, or sorry, is uh, connected to this um, this here Superior Court um, violation, Your Honor, but um, Mr. Gray is uh, able to stay um, away and have no contact um, with the uh, alleged victim in this case. He has no problem um, complying with those bond orders. Okay, I mean, it was a bond condition, so go ahead, Mr. Malkin. Thank you. Based on on him committing this offense while out on bond for another offense with the same victim and everything else we heard from pretrial, the state would request a $100,000 bond on the exploitation of elderly person and $20,000 bond on the battery for a total of 120. Of course, no contact, stay away, and an ankle monitor. So I've read this a couple of times, slapped his 95-year-old grandmother, all right? So he can't go back there at all. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no replicas of weapons. Stay away, sir. You cannot go back. You were not supposed to be around the victim before. You cannot go back and be around the victim. Stay away from 2892 Connolly Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. No further See contact with Brenda Glass or L O U R E. Excuse me. L O U R E R R E L, last name Gray, G R A Y. No further contact with any of them. You're going to have that ankle monitor paid for by the county if available with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. You have supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you'll be working. You have absolutely no contact with them, sir. Must supply an address upon release. 100,000 count one, 20,000 count two. Best of luck to you, sir. So they've said that Mr. Cashland's, uh, Ms. Salterasi said that Mr. Cashland's case needs to be reset. Do you know how far out, Ms. Salterasi? Honestly, Judge, probably as soon as possible. Okay. Because of the reset okay. reason. All right. So we can set uh, Bobby Evans. Mr. Evans, you can leave the booth. We have to reset your case. Thank you, sir. And Judge, you know when that reset would be, just so I can track it, make sure there's an attorney here? Um, I'm going to try that reset it for april the 9th okay i'll let i'll let, I'll, I'll let both his cases be reset to april the 9th right, he, had just one case case? On, he had another case on here as well judge yes two cases on the calendar yes I just saw one on here uh mr langford he was another one that was on the add on uh he it says that he's represented by mr cashlin as well oh do you want that one to reset too Yes, Judge, both of them. All right. Oh, let's see. Are they both add-ons? Just so I, I want to email. No, just, just, one was, just one's an add-on. Both of them are on the add-on calendar, Judge. Oh, okay. Yeah, both of them. Okay. So Damon Langford. Sorry. Damon Langford. No, nope, you ain't going to. I don't know what that means, but your case is reset. <laughs> All right. You can leave the booth. <laughs> Bobby Evans. Thanks for Y'all can leave the booth. All right. Daryl. Let's see. We got Daryl Calloway. Not yet. But John Johnson. All right. That's position 16. Sir, we're not going to hear your other case because you're on a bond surrender hearing for that on yeah. April the 4th. Judge, can I please put my request to be heard on it again? I looked at it. It's a pretrial surrender when they when they served an older warrant. It's not that he reoffended. If you look at the dates, it's not a situation like that. Can we please be heard on both tonight? They're both on the calendar. He's on the April 4th, I mean. But Judge, that's 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 like next week. He could post a bond within that week. I, I don't know. I mean, you saw who put it on there. 
I know. I, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I've been in this situation with my clients before too, and you've heard them the cases before. And then I've emailed Judge Drake, and she just takes it off the calendar. So it's it's really not a problem, and it actually saves resources because the jail wouldn't have to produce him over on the fourth. And he's on the calendar tonight, so the state got notice, and we could just resolve both today. Mr. Malkin. Well, we'd be asking for he's not entitled to a bond on the on the criminal damage anyway, or well, it's a bond surrender. But if you look at the day, if you so we'd have to no. set a bond. Yeah, if that's a uh, the offense yeah, of the he new committed case. a new offense while he was out on bond no. or that one it looks like. That's not the situation. If you look at the date of the offense of the burglary, yeah. which is the second case, right. the offense date is uh, as this I'm sorry. October 6, 2023. I'm looking at the arrest date, January 19th of 24. But that's okay. not, they served an older warrant when he was out on pretrial. He did not re-offend while being out on pretrial. I see. Okay. So it's, it's he really didn't violate pretrial. So honestly, he's, he's entitled to the original bond he had on that criminal damage. And then we just deal with the burglary. We set a bond on the burglary today. Hmm. So he was out on a pretrial release bond and committed the burglary no. in January. No, Judge. That's what I'm trying to say is that the burglary was allegedly committed in, in October of 2023. They didn't arrest him on it until January of 2024, which generated the new case. He, they could have served this burglary warrant on him back when he was in custody under the criminal damage case, and they didn't. They served an older warrant. You look at the incident dates. It tells the story. Well, once it had uh, that on there, I didn't even look at it anymore. Once it had that, the incident had started, uh, had been alleged to committed before he was even out on bond on the criminal damage case, the burglary incident. So it's not a situation where, hey, you're out on a pretrial bond and you recommit another another crime allegedly. It's where allegedly you committed two crimes before. They served one warrant on you. You get out on pretrial, and then they serve the second warrant on you later. He didn't reoffend. <laughs> Mr. Malkin? It looks like that's probably correct. What was his bond on the criminal damage? Was it a UJR? It was a signature, it was a signature bond, a pretrial. Okay. So. And then when they served the burglary case on him, they no bonded him. He's been no bond for over 90 days. So he's got no bond on the burglary. And no, he's got a 7,500 on the burglary as of January 20th. Oh, oh okay. okay. But he's no bond on the criminal damage right now because they surrendered pretrial. Okay. On the booking screen, it, it still says no bond on the burglary. Yeah, so there's been a, a delay with um on the e file. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not reflecting it. So all right. So do you want a a, a 7500 on the criminal damage? I mean, I no, I, I would want a signature bond criminal damage because he didn't reoffend. You guys granted him the criminal damage signature bond. And then they served an older case on him. Right. So like, I just penalizing someone who they didn't even violate pretrial. Realistically, he didn't violate pretrial. He didn't. No, I hear what you're saying, event. but it also sounds like maybe the court didn't have the full picture when the, the UJR was set on the criminal damage because he hadn't been arrested yet on the burglary, but it had already been committed. So that, so, yeah. So I, I, I get what you're saying that, yeah, that it's not really a proper surrender because it's not a new offense if the surrender is based on the new offense. So, but he probably ought to have some kind of a bond on the criminal damage. because I mean, re re state is very fair. We, we, this is something I've done numerous times over with the state and with Judge Manning and with other judges too. If they mm -hmm. if it, they serve an older warrant on you, you didn't reoffend. Now, if the situation he reoffended, okay, that would be fair to set a bond on both cases like that. Mm -hmm. But when it's a situation where you do what you're supposed to do, and then the state catches up to serve other warrants on you, it's not fair to take away the bond that you didn't you didn't violate. He did not violate the criminal damage signature bond. He didn't do anything wrong. He checked in with pretrial. He did what he was supposed to do. But they served on a warrant on, so they rearrested him. So they just automatically vibe, just take it away. But a little bit about Mr. Miss, Miss, uh, have we heard from Bostic yet? 
No, I don't think so, Judge. You're Assuming right. that's correct, and I guess, Your Honor, if if the bond surrender is based on the arrest for the burglary, then I would say Ms. Safarazzi is probably correct. And I guess we can just confirm that with pretrial that it's not a bond surrender for a different reason. Which defendant? <laughs> John Johnson, 15 and 16. She snuck that one in. It looks like the bond surrender probably was done because of the new arrest. It's done by Ms. Hardy. It was done because he was rearrested. I agree. She did, she did a nice job. PI, there. 000, yes. 000, 0471 case, correct? Yes. Okay. So, yes, Judge, it's, it's what I was saying. It's the trigger of this case is what pretrial surrendered for. All right. Thank you, boss. Thank you. Yeah. So the the offense date on the warrant though says 10 26 23 no it says the offense date is 12 to 23 for the burglary oh, yeah, on the uh sorry on the criminal damage look at the burglary okay go ahead go ahead miss offer just make your argument will you so yeah yeah i mean it's it's the criminal I'll, I'll look i'll look i'll look just make your bond argument let me pull it up well it's okay, live so Melissa. for mr johnson he's 44 so, years old i don't know what happens lifelong resident here in georgia we do have a good address for him in atlanta georgia and we have good contact information for him um judge like i said with the criminal Probably. damage to property he he was already given a ujr bond on it he did not violate the court's order on that so i would ask for the ujr to be reinstated for the criminal damage case and for the burglary, it's in the second degree. It's, it's an alleged business. I would ask for the bond not to exceed five thousand dollars total, so we could try for the bail project. He's been Should in the bail. Days, I'm Judge. sorry, I thought you was done, Mr. Alfredson. A bond surrender shouldn't have been done on it since it predated the. He didn't commit a new offense. Um, either the person who did it or it should have been announced that it wasn't a new offense, and a bond surrender was should have been told not to be done at first appearance. Go ahead, Mr. Malcolm. All right, thank you. So, yeah, I think legally Ms. Saparazzi is correct about the, the UJR ought to be reinstated, it could be reinstated. You will and never understand. The burglary that, in the man. second, we would just ask for a $7,000 bond. Good on man. man. All right, so $6,000 bond. Reinstate position 15, position 16, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no replicas of weapons. Stay away from 1449 Donnelly Avenue Southwest and all Checkers restaurants. No further contact with Laura Phillips. $6,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. Thanks, Judge. Thanks. All right. Janelle Willingham. For the record, I am feeling better. You, Mr. Johnson, you can leave the booth. I need Willingham. Not 100%. All right. Uh, hell Position of a lot, 7, 23, CP, 224487. 91 days without indictment. No bond as of December the 28th. Theft by receiving stolen property. Possession of a knife for a firearm during the commission of a felony. Trafficking in illegal drugs. Purchase, possession, manufacturing, and distribution of marijuana. Uh, possession of firearm by a convicted felon and drug related objects. So it alleges 31 grams of methamphetamines and 26 grams of marijuana. Did you say ah. Willingham or Evan? Willingham. Willingham of. Uh... Numerous felonies that's possession with the intent 2012 Ag Assault Open Case 23 SC 191110 Schedule 2 Firearm Doing Firearm by Theft by Receiving PI and the second one. Then there's 23 CP 224487 oh. Theft by Receiving Firearm Doing Traffic. There we go. Danny's got a one up. I'm watching from the hospital further. bed, but you get better. All right. uh -huh. Go ahead. <laughs> I hope you're okay. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Willingham is 43 years old, um, a lifelong resident of the state of Georgia. Um, he is a high school graduate, Your Honor. Um, he is also a, a father, um, Your Honor, to uh, five children. Um, as you are aware, Your Honor, he is um, here on his uh, 91st day um, with no bond. And so at this time, Your Honor, we are asking for a bond to be instated in this case here, um, not to exceed $30,000 in total. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Malkin. All right. Thank you. Based on what we've heard with his multiple open cases and his record and the same charges now that he's had that he has in the open cases, we would request a total bond of 110,000, 20 on the theft by receiving, 20 on the gun during, 40 on the trafficking, 10 on the marijuana, 20 on the gun by felon, and a UJR on the drug related objects. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no replicas of weapons. Stay away from 1000 Piedmont Avenue Northeast. No further contact with Michael Davis. You have ankle monitor, if available, paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you spot the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you'll be working. He lives in Douglasville? Um, yes, Your Honor. All right. Good. Place. They can stay out of Fulton County. The only reason you come back to Fulton County, sir, is court or to see your lawyer. Do not come back to Fulton County for anything other than court and to see your lawyer. Fill up a gas in Douglasville. Don't run out of gas. Don't get out of flat tire. 10,000, 20,000, 20,000, 10,000, 10,000, and UJR jail. That's 10,000, 20,000, 20,000, 10,000, 10,000, UJR jail. Best of luck to you, sir. Jalen Stallworth. All right. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Now, Mr. Sibucci, you see everybody's been here making me mad, so you're up. You ready? I'm ready, hopefully <laughs> not to make you angry. Um, All right. Judge, right. I, this position I, 12, 23 CP 224274, 100 days without indictment, no bond as of January the 16th. We got kidnapping, ag assault, possession of firearm during the commission of a felony. <laughs> Four prior arrests, open case 23SC189779, meth, firearm, storing, drug related objects, purchase possession manufacturing, uh, which is in judicial hold, one FTA and 23. All right, go ahead, Mr. Sarah Judge number one, I apologize for my late arrival. I got notice of the uh, hearing at 511, so I, I immediately jumped on. Okay. Um, what I would say is that he's been in custody now for over 90 days without having been indicted so he's entitled to a bond we'd ask the court to set a reasonable bond uh he resides at fourth excuse me 530 rock lake view college park uh he's lived in georgia's entire life he graduated from creekside high school um he lives with his parents and his two siblings at the home we're asking the court to set a reasonable bond in the amount of twenty-five thousand. all right go ahead mr malkin Thank you. The, the state would request a $40,000 bond on the kidnapping, a $60,000 bond on the aggravated assault, and a $20,000 bond on the gun during. Thank All you. right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no replicas of weapons. No further contact with T-I-M-E-A-U-S Hill, H-I-L-L. -L. Stay away from 4605 Oakley Lane Southwest. Now have an ankle monitor paid for by you, sir, with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. You have to supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you'll be working. We got 40,000, 50,000, and 10,000. 40,000, 50,000, and 10,000. Best of luck to you, sir. Good to see you, Mr. Sarah Booth. Judge, may I inquire of the court, is an order going to automatically be produced or do I not need to present one? Uh, we'll, um, we'll do the order, we'll e-file it. So um, go on e-file Georgia or wherever and associate with the case and they'll send it to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate All it. All right, thank you. Have a good evening. Good to see you. Yeah, bye-bye. All right, Tyrone Gates. Position 14, 23, CP 220719, 237 days without indictment. 
$80,000 good bond as of December the 8th. We got trafficking in illegal drugs, marijuana, methamphetamine, sale of cocaine, trafficking in illegal drugs, marijuana, or methamphetamines, and sale of cocaine. Wow. Repeat offender, at least five felonies, unsuspended sentence for firearm, 23SC191173, sentence uh, on the 11th for five years. There's 12 SC 108118 cocaine with intent, which is in judicial hold. Prior convictions for purchase, manufacturing, sale, numerous convictions, at least three for cocaine with intent and one for marijuana with intent to distribute. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Off Rossi. Uh, thank you, Judge. Mr. Gates has been incarcerated 237 days uh, without an indictment. There was a preliminary hearing back in August of last year. Um, he is. 42 years old. We do have a good address for him here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we have good, con which he's had for the last 16 years, or sorry, six years. He's a lifelong resident here in Georgia. He does have family, including his sisters, his brothers, his uncles, and his uh, child's, his children. Um, he's, he went to school. Uh, he got his GED from Atlanta Tech. Yeah. Um... Without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved. That working as a dis oh, he's he was working, but he's he's on the SSI because he has a disability now. He has three children, Your Honor, who all live here in Georgia. Um, I would ask to say if they've tested these alleged drugs yet. Uh, Two hundred and thirty-seven days, no movement on this case. Um, he can't afford this bond. Judge, <laughs> too high. I would ask for the bond to reduce to thirty thousand dollars total. All right, go ahead, Mr. Malkin. Thank you. We would request uh, 22,000 on the trafficking, 12,000 on the sale of cocaine, 22 on the other trafficking, and 12 on the other sale of cocaine for a total of 68,000. And of course, no drugs, no weapons. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no replicas of weapons. Stay away from 1315 Thornhill Drive. Stay away from 855 Oak Street. <laughs> You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county if available with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. You have to supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you'd be working. Uh, 20,000, 10,000, 20,000, and 10,000. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Shemaine Coffee. And Judge, that completes my business for tonight. My be excuse. Yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Position two, 23 CP, 224407, 93 days without indictment, $15,000 good bond as of December 26th. Uh, felony obstruction, terrorist threats and acts, and interference with government property. Free. Free. 26 cycles, open misdemeanor for obstruction and disorderly conduct, open case 23 CP, 218675, criminal damage to property and criminal trespass. Conviction for aggravated assault and obstruction, terroristic threats, and false imprisonment on probation for terroristic threats, interference, government property, 20 SC 174713. Sentence in 2021, you can find the four years probation, nothing further. Four North, boot two, pick your head up. Four North, boot two, pick your head up. All right, go ahead, Mr. Dobbs. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Coffey is uh, almost a, a lifelong resident of uh, Atlanta. He uh, moved here when he was uh, very, very young yeah. and has lived here uh, ever famous. since. We have a, a, a good address <laughs> for Mr. Coffey on Rose Circle Southwest in, uh, at uh, Atlanta. Um, he has much family here in the way of two uh, sons, um, both of which I've uh, actually spoken to uh, about this case. Um, he has a, a sister and mother, all of which uh, live locally. The uh, address uh, I, I just uh, alluded to is his uh, mother's uh, address. Um, <clears throat> Judge Candley, this is a, a case. I think if 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 anyone looks at the uh, specific accusations, you know, one one would figure that Mr. Coffey uh, does suffer from some uh, MH issues. Um, and uh, I I, I want to just you know bring to the court's uh, att attention that he did have a um, an appointment to get MH treatment at a place called Mercy Care on uh, Dick. Cater Street, which was scheduled for uh, January 19th. Obviously, he uh, cannot make it to that, but I just want to highlight to the court that he has made attempts to 
get help uh, for himself. Uh, I've, of course, made a social work order on Mr. Coffee's uh, behalf, and we're looking for placements at uh, Hope House and uh, Salvation Army, as well as uh, treatment through uh, Grady and the place that I uh, mentioned, uh, Mercy Care. But my understanding is that he would have to actually get out to go uh, reseek uh, treatment at uh, at uh, Mercy Care. Uh, I understand what the uh, accusations are. He's been in for 93 days with a bond that he can't even come close to uh, making. It's uh, not as, uh, as if Mr. Coffey has faced no uh, comeuppance for his charges. Um, for, from the uh, pre-trial uh, r- report, uh, I don't think I heard uh, any FTAs. We all know that the main purpose of bond is to ensure uh, one's presence in court. And Mr. Coffey seems to be a guy who uh, does uh, come to come to court. Um, so uh, for uh, all of those uh, reasons, um, I'm going to ask for a uh, a $1,000 bond on the uh, obstruction charge, a uh, $500 bond on the terroristic threats and acts, and a uh, UJR on the interference with uh, government property. Thank you. All right, Mr. Malkins. Thank you, We did not hear about FTAs, but we sure did hear about other crimes, aggravated assault, terroristic threats, interference with government property, for which he's on probation when he committed the same offense, and open cases. The state would request a $4,000 bond on each count for a total of 12000 Thank you. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no replicas of weapons. Stay away from 1355 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard. No further violent, co- no further contact with Officer Barber. No further violent contact with any law enforcement officer. Period. Four thousand per count. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lead a boost. Judge Mabby, uh, excuse. Yes, sir. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right, uh, Daryl Calloway. Daryl Calloway. Might want to run a comb for that here. <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Calloway, I saw was present earlier. I'm not sure um, what would have happened as well. Uh, Mr. Gray is still here. We heard his case a little while ago. Mr. Gray, you could leave the booth. I was thinking. Mr. Langford. Wave your hand if your name is Langford. Wave your hand if your name is Godfrey. Wave your hand if your name is Maxie Adams. Your lawyer withdrew your, your motion, sir. He'll call you and talk to you ne- uh, later during the week. You could leave the booth, sir. So I don't know where Mr. Where was Mr. Yeah, Mr. Callaway. He was in 3 South, and it's still open there. I can reset it if he wants me to reset it um, to try to get him back on another calendar. Yeah, what you want to do? Um, Your Honor, we're I think we're okay with it being reset. He's uh, scheduled for a prelim this Friday, and we'll have an opportunity to be heard on bond then as well. All righty. If if you don't, if you do, then let us know. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Have a good weekend. No court on Thursday. No, no, no. All right, this was sent to me. I got a couple clips here. Jalapeno sent me another one. I wasn't going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm not, I don't have anything nice to say, so I'm not going to say anything at all. But that's not this one. This, this is This is just an interesting one. I think this is Travis County, Texas. <clears throat> It's interesting. I, w- I would have I would have uh, ha- had Yesenia come on here and explain it in Spanish because we're having an exchange in Spanish and I don't understand it. But you'll see what happens. However, Yesenia is day off, so I, I I I couldn't I couldn't pull her in to do that. <laughs> Tell us what's happening here, Maria.
Esto no es aquí donde vas a estar diciendo tu pinche cuerpo. Ok, pues ya se lo digo. No, pues aquí me quedo. Quédate ahí entonces. Me quedo, ¿qué es lugar? Con el hecho de que se haga un poquito más para allá. No lo puedes hacer para allá. Te dije que te iba a mover. ¿Por qué me pegas a mí, güey? Te dije que te iba a mover. ¿Por qué me pegas? ¿Te vas a sentar o te vas a quedar en el suelo? No, como quieras. Ok, entonces ya está ahí. Aquí no va a estar aquí. Ok, pero es un poco. Aquí se va a bajar la fuerza cuando la tengo que salir. Sí, ok, ya. Ya terminamos. Si quieres lo mandar para atrás con la casa, ¿me puedo poner otra vez? Yo te voy a llevar cuando terminamos. Ok, cuando terminamos. Iris, you understand what's going on here? So this is the thing I was telling you guys. Please. Everything is being recorded. Everything is in the room like this that you use against me. I think you sent this to me. Anyone else we're expecting? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Oh, yes. It's that time. It is that time. Let me see. Where are we now? Now I got I to gotta find the... <laughs> no, this one might be good. Going back and forth between texts with one another, and I never want to hear it again. Not, no, uh, I'm just clearing this out is in the this. district court of Ellis County, Kansas, case number 22 DM 190 DC. You, you can guess what I think about this situation, but if I say one thing that I honestly believe. The pearl clutchers will, will lose their freaking minds as they do every day anyway. Yeah, versus Cortell Jackson. May I have an announcement of appearances, please? Yes, sir. For DCF. Your Honor, Colton Eikenberry is appearing on behalf of Cortell Jackson, and he is also present this here. Your Honor, may it please the court, Mackenzie McCoy is guardian ad litem. Hey, and you're Hunter House? Okay. And you're aware of these proceedings? Uh, yes. Okay. We were set to have a hearing on the Ross motion to have DNA testing performed. I am in receipt of the letter from the guardian ad litem. I have reviewed that letter. Does anyone have any objection to the letter? Mr. Eichenberg? No, sir. Ms. Harper? No, Your Honor. No, no. And new. How would the parties like to proceed here today? Your Honor, I think we've really covered a lot of the facts in our prior hearings. And given that no one is objecting to Ms. McCoy's letter, uh, I find it to line up with the information we've heard in our hearings prior and what we've learned, I think, independently. Um, I think maybe I would I would put this out there and ask if the court would just hear a proffer from the attorneys as to our positions regarding this. Court would. Okay. Appreciate it, Your Honor. Um, shall I go ahead? Go ahead. Okay. Your Honor, I, I find Ms. McCoy's letter to be as I've said already, very um, accurate as to the situation in that my client, uh, Mr. Jackson, really has not had any sort of 
relationship with this child. Uh, he is married to the mother, but they have been separated uh, prior to her conceiving the child. And through the investigation and through the statements made prior by the mother when she attended a hearing, uh, all parties believe that Hunter House is likely the father of this child. Uh, he has a relationship with the child, so we are not endangering uh, the relationship that she would have with her presumed father by checking into whether or not Mr. House is her natural father and going from there. All right. The big winner here is Cortell Jackson because it's presumed he's the father because she was married to him at the time she had the baby. But my guess, we don't see the baby and we don't see mom. But my guess is it's obvious that he's not the father. And Hunter House thinks he is the father, although I have my doubts about that. Um, so that is the position that we would have, Your Honor, is that the court make the findings that it is in the child's best interest to determine her father is and order DNA testing to determine that. <clears throat> Ms. Harper. Your Honor, I believe Mr. Eikenberry stated everything out really correctly. We've previously had the mother before the court and she testified under oath that while married to Mr. Jackson, she does believe that the father of the child is Hunter House. Through her testimony, she stated Mr. Jackson doesn't have a relationship with the child, but that Mr. House does. So I believe between the mother's testimony as well as the investigation. She believes. Uh -huh investigation done by Ms. McCoy, it would be appropriate to move forward with genetic testing at this time. And Ms. McCoy, would you like to add to your letter? No, Your Honor. I believe my letter um, states my position. Um, I agree with everybody else today. Poor Hunter's a big old simp. Like I said, it appears I don't, I don't even understand this procedure, but the, the, everyone wants to do to, to do the DNA test. But most notably, uh, Cortell Jackson, who doesn't want to be on the hook for a baby that's clearly not his. <laughs> oh shoot! That's what she was. Where am I? <coughs> Miss Harper. Your Honor, I believe Mr. Eikenberry stated everything out really correct my position um i agree with everybody else today um again i just reiterate what's in my letter already is that i don't believe it would be harmful um to her best interest to do genetic testing at this time the court finds the purpose of the statute with the presumption of parentage being within the marriage and the need for the Ross hearing to determine if it's in the best interest of the child is primarily to protect relationships that have been created and are in existence between husband, wife, and fathers and children. Um, the court adopts the findings of the guardian and item letter. In this situation, the presumed father has had very little contact with the child. Um, although he was married to the mother at the time of conception, and Mr. House is openly acknowledging that he is the father of the child and has a relationship with the knows. child. So the court does find it's in the best interest of this child to have DNA testing done to determine whether factually Mr. House is in fact the father of the child given the history of the parties and the relationships between the parties and the child. So as far as getting that done, Ms. Harper, what is the preferred method for DCF to have them come in for testing? So once we get the signed court order, another department will reach out to all the parties and tell them where their closest testing facility is. 
I assume there is one in Texas, although I'm not sure exactly where it would be. But parties would get tested, results would get in, and then we would send out the notice of the results. Mom's not at this hearing. Do they have to go to the same testing center? No. Okay. Because I believe Mr. Howell still resides here. Yeah. This, and this the, gets worse. Um, Mother, Miss Wallace Edmonds, resides here. Although she hasn't been real good at coming to these hearings. Can I say something? You may. Um, she actually moved to Texas last month. Oh, she did? Yes. You know where in Texas? I assume Dallas. So he doesn't. He's on a need-to-know basis. But wait, there's more. Are you maintaining a relationship with her at this time? Um, yes, she actually left the child here with me, and I've had her for the past month. That's all you need to know right there. What are the plans moving forward, Mr. Hobbs? Um, well, she was just planning on moving, and I asked her to leave the child here with me, and uh, at least until she could figure out a job in a stable environment in Texas. So I still do talk to her. Uh -huh. Ms. Harper, you're the most likely choice. And this is why I have serious doubts. I'm not saying it's possible. I think that she had some relationship with him, but I have serious doubts that, that he that, that he's even the father. Um, <clears throat> I, I mean, in that circumstance, wouldn't I don't know? Wouldn't wouldn't you try to get with the father? Well, I used to be the coordinator of the DNA testing. Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to ask you to do that and take on that role. Uh, and Mr. House, can you, not now, but after we're done with our hearing, stay on, Ms. Harper will stay on, and you'll need to give her your contact information uh, for Ms. Um, Edmonds so that we can get a hold of her, okay? Okay, I probably couldn't do it at this very moment because my phone is locked up downstairs in the court. Okay. Well, then you can arrange to give Miss Harper a phone call afterwards. Okay. And get that information to her. Okay. And so, if Miss Miss Harper, one, put together an order from today's hearing. Two, if you'll coordinate the DNA testing, um, and then we'll go from there. How long do you anticipate needing for the testing and the results? It is how long it takes all the parties to go to their specific testing locations. Normally, we'd be able to get everything back within two months, but if a party has issues showing up, it may take longer. Okay. So I suggest setting this out maybe two months and see where we are. Uh, Jess, why don't we go out 10 weeks? Mid-June, Judge, the, the week of June 10th, you have the morning of the 11th open. It will be available June 11th in the morning. I'm free as well. June 11th at what time, Jess? Nine. Six eleven at nine o'clock? Yes, Judge. Okay. So if you'll include that hearing time in your order? Yes, Your Honor. Sarper? Oh, you sure. get back together on June 11th at nine o'clock. 
and that's still via Zoom, correct? I would anticipate so, particularly if the mother has moved to Texas, it'd be a lot easier to get her hooked up by Zoom. And I believe Mr. Jackson is it's learning out of state as well. <laughs> yes, sir. Tell. Yeah. Okay, so we'll stay on Zoom unless or until one of the parties requests we do the live hearing and then we'll discuss it. Okay. okay. Any objection to no. Zoom, Mr. Eikenberry? No, no, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. McCoy? No, Your Honor. And Ms. Harper? No, Your Honor. Okay, we'll stay on Zoom for now. And we'll get together on June 11th at 9 o'clock. The court does order all the parties to participate in taking the DNA test. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> court Anything talk, further? He I'm knows he's, he's not in. No, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> Anything further, Ms. Harper? No, sir. Anything further, Ms. McCoy? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you all. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, I'm going to do it. Ma'am, are you a whore? <laughs> I object to the relevance of that, Your Honor. Oh. All right. What? I'll, I'll tie it up real quick, Judge. All yes, right, sir. go ahead. You're not a whore? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you have it. That was a weird stream. It really did start because everyone was complaining about not seeing Judge Manning. Like, they just missed Judge Manning. So there was nothing going on. Although, we, we did kick it off right away with the, with the guy. Uh, it reminds me of the, uh, the the hot sauce, Smack Your Mama, except it was Smack Your Grandma. And uh, Judge Manning didn't like that very much. <laughs> I don't know what her problem with that is. <laughs> <laughs> who said that was in poor taste, huh? Oh, there we go. There we go. And then I had a couple of clips that I wasn't going to do, but I got inspired. I got inspired, and I had to share. I still don't know. All right, somebody in the chat. Maria, Iris, what, what, were, they, what were those guys going on about in Spanish there? Why, why did they get the leg sweep? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maria's not allowed to change her picture. Oh, good Lord. All right. That was an odd stream. That was an odd stream, but I, I'm 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 doing the best I can. Uh jalapeno has gotten me through. And Alyssa's telling me that she sent me some stuff, but I didn't see anything from Alyssa. I, I probably didn't look in the right spot. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling much better, but still, still not up to to normal. So I haven't been able to like affirmatively go looking. All right, thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon. <laughs>